This video will show you the best swing trading indicators and how you can use them to trade for a consistent income. If you like this video, make sure to leave it a like and make sure to subscribe for more stock market tutorials. First up is one of the best indicators for swing trading and that is the MACD. So this is a trend indicator meaning that it tells you when a reversal is about to happen in a stock, whether that be it's going to break to the upside or it might be breaking to the downside. When you first add the MACD to your chart, it will look like this. Now, it's important not to change these settings unless you have a specific reason to. We know a lot of swing trading and day trading is about self-fulfilling prophecies. What I mean by that is that oftentimes a lot of swing traders or day traders will recognize the same pattern at the same time and then they will use that pattern to enter the trade. When enough traders do this all simultaneously, they actually create enough buying pressure, which pushes up the stock, creating a self-fulfilling feedback loop. So you always want to use the default settings of 12, 26, and nine, because the whole point of using these indicators is that you're seeing what everyone else is seeing. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into what the MACD actually is. The MACD is calculated by subtracting the 26 EMA from the 12 EMA, and creating a constantly updated line, which looks similar to a moving average. A nine day EMA of the MACD line is then added as well, which is meant to be used to show buy or sell signals. The most common way to use MACD as a swing trading indicator is to look for divergences or a crossover of the center line of the histogram. At least in theory, when the MACD crosses above zero, it's showing buying opportunities when it crosses below zero, it's showing selling or shorting opportunities. Essentially, if you are looking for a simple swing trading strategy for beginners, you can wait till the red bars cross over and become green bars in order to enter and buy a trade. When this happens, it does show you that the stock has a lot of strength and momentum. So MACD can be considered one of the best swing trading indicators, but you have to actually understand how to use it and what it's telling you. I see a lot of people using it in an oversimplified manner. Obviously, if it was so simple as I just described it, where you just buy a stock every time it crosses from red to green, then we'd all be billionaire traders by now, right? And obviously that's not the case. So what MACD is actually telling you from a more advanced perspective is it's actually showing you the change in momentum of a stock. If MACD shows us the difference between a 12 period moving average and a 26 period moving average, then anytime it's greater than zero, it's just telling you that the more recent price action, the 12 day price action is stronger than the 26 day price action before it. So simply put, it shows you that the stock is gaining momentum, right? The more recent price action is stronger than it has been in the past. That's really what it's showing you. Now, if the actual green bars continue to grow and are getting larger and larger, it's showing you that the stock is getting even stronger and the momentum is increasing. For swing trading, we're all about catching momentum. So that's why this is really one of the best swing trading indicators I use pretty regularly. The next swing trading indicator we're going to go over is VWAP. Now this is typically used for day trading, but I still use it regularly to swing trade as well. The volume weighted average price or more commonly known as VWAP is a trading indicator that is calculated by taking the number of shares bought times the share price and then dividing by total shares bought. So here's a little picture of how it's calculated. Basically, it shows the average price of a stock based on the volume that was traded at one specific price. It's usually calculated within a one day time frame, and it displays on your chart and looks similar to a moving average, although it's a much slower and more lagging indicator than say the eight EMA or 20 day EMA. A simple swing trading strategy that some traders use is just simply to buy the stock if it closes the day above the VWAP, and sell the stock or short it if it closes the day below the VWAP. A day trading strategy that some traders use is to let the market make a move up for the first couple of candles and then wait for a pullback to the VWAP to either get long with the trend 
or to short the trend if it's moving downwards. Now, as a swing trading indicator, it's important to understand that VWAP will often act as a support or resistance line. If it's acting as a support line, this means that a stock will often fall down to the VWAP hit the VWAP and then bounce off of it and reverse back up, finding support at that line. On the other hand, if a stock has been trending up, it will sometimes reach towards the VWAP, but then be unable to break it, reverse back and start falling down. In terms of swing trading strategies, I use VWAP as an indicator to tell me, is this specific stock overall stronger or weaker than the market as a whole? If a stock is holding above the VWAP for any considerable period of time, it's a very good indication of strength. And it might be an indication that we should get long the stock for a swing trade if there are also other positive indicators to use as well. The next swing trading indicator we're going to go over in this video is the Relative Strength Index or RSI. RSI was developed by J. Wells Wildler and it's actually a momentum oscillator that just measures the speed and change of price movements. The RSI oscillates between zero and 100. Traditionally, the RSI is considered overbought above 70 and oversold when it's below 30. Signals can be generated by looking for divergences and failure swings. RSI can also be used to identify the general trend. In an uptrend or bull market, the RSI tends to remain in the 40 to 90 range with the 40 to 50 zone typically acting as support. During a downtrend or a bear market, the RSI tends to stay between 10 to 60, with the 50 or 60 zone acting as a resistance. These ranges will vary depending on the settings that you have and the strength of the stock or market's underlying trend as well. So typically people use RSI as a sort of warning sign uh, they think, okay, the RSI of a stock is super high. It probably cannot keep rising. It's overbought. So I'm going to short the stock or wait for a pullback. And on the other hand, if the RSI of a stock is super low, it's at 20 or 30. Well, the RSI, it's so oversold that maybe I'm going to be so smart and go in and buy the stock before the reversal. That's kind of on the most basic level how people tend to use it. Now, the better way to use RSI is to look for discrepancies between the indicator and the actual stock prices price action. I mentioned this in my swing trading strategies video, which I will link to below. And if you want like an even more in-depth explanation, I go over it pretty extensively in that video. So I recommend you check it out. Essentially, an RSI discrepancy occurs when a stock price is rising, but the RSI is declining. It can also occur in the reverse with a falling stock price where the RSI is rising. Now this discrepancy in the RSI and the stock price is a pretty strong signal that something is just not quite right. If a stock's price is continuing to rise up, but the RSI, which is really measuring momentum, is declining, then that trend obviously cannot continue. So we're taking a look at Apple here. And what's pretty interesting is we actually have a very strong divergence. Now, I didn't even really prepare this. I knew I was making this video. So I went through a couple stocks and sort of stumbled upon this and I was pretty surprised by it. So we have our RSI down here, which we know predicts momentum and we have the stock price up here. Well, as we know, a divergent is when the RSI and the stock price are not sort of on the same page. So let's look at what the stock price has been doing. It's been rising steadily for about a year now. I'm on the weekly chart. And let's look at the RSI or momentum. Well, we see lower peaks in momentum with higher stock price peaks, okay? So this is like a classic divergence and it's actually pretty extreme. So we see the momentum dying out here, right? RSI uses volume and buying pressure to sort of predict swings and momentum. Well, this cannot, this rally cannot continue on lower volume. Like look, the volume's also been shrinking up and lower RSI. This is just on the weekly chart. We want confirmation on multiple time frames. So let's check the uh, daily chart as well. I'm here on the 180 day, four hour chart. And we see a sort of similar pattern, right? So we have the stock price 
moving up pretty aggressively. But if we go from these same points, the RSI is basically stayed flat and is actually slightly declining, right? So this is not as extreme on the weekly. It was even more pronounced. And as a side note, longer time frames are always a little bit more accurate. If you see a pattern on a short time frame, you kind of want to go to the longer time frame uh, to confirm it. So another example here, let's look at Tesla. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a divergence between the stock price and the actual RSI. So RSI down here and the stock price. What we see here, we have lower peaking RSI, right? This peak is lower than this peak. So obviously the stock price should be declining as well because a rally cannot continue with lowered momentum. Well, what do we get when we're looking up here? Well, this thing has been uptrending extremely aggressively for like, how long is this? For 61 days on lower and lower momentum. Guys, I'm not a financial advisor, so I cannot tell you what to do, but this is a pretty extreme divergence. Um, just think of it, if there's less volume and less momentum on a stock, how can it continue its uptrend, right? I mean, this is pretty extreme, right? Increasing stock price on lower momentum. These things don't last forever. It's just not possible. Now, I'm not saying Tesla's going to crash or anything, but it's due for a correction and a pretty big correction in my opinion. So let's look at a larger time frame here, the one year, one day. And same thing, right? We It's not as pronounced, but when we zoom out here, from this peak to this peak of the stock price, and then let's look at the RSI from that to the current RSI. It's slightly downtrending, right? It's not as pronounced, but still, you need increasing volume. We, we actually have less volume up here in these bars, and we have less momentum as the stock price is continuing to rise. It's just, it's not sustainable. Look, anything can happen, right? But it's just statistically unlikely that the stock would continue to rise without any pullback as the RSI, which is momentum, is staying totally flat, okay? If you have any specific questions on swing trading or investing in general, drop them in the comment section below. Also feel free to suggest something that you want to learn about so I can make a video on that. And if you want, you can also reach out to me on Instagram, send me a DM. I'll put a link to my account below as well. Make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell and leave a like. It really, really helps out the channel so that I can continue making these videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.